This is S23 Ultra. It was just released today. And this is gonna be a real day in the life review. We're gonna test out the new 200 megapixel camera. Is that actually worth it? Does it make a difference? Does it make the images worse? And then also track the battery life throughout the entire day of trying out a bunch of different stuff. Hanging out with technology, it's like my favorite thing ever. So super stoked to be doing that. So full. <laughs> <laughs> The rhetoric on Twitter of this being like the same as last year, I think is not true. There are actually a significant number of improvements and small changes. For example, the base storage now is more storage. It's 256 gigabytes. That is kind of what compensates for the price increase. Also, the edges on the phone actually feel a little bit better this year. It fits a little bit better in the hand. It still has the S Pen support. The selfie camera was maybe downgraded. It's now a 12 megapixel sensor. And I think one of the things that Samsung has really struggled with in the past is skin smoothing issues and making the images soft. So they actually said, fun fact, in Korea, the default is going to be this like warm color hue for the selfies, but everywhere else it's gonna be cooler uh, color hue and more natural. So less skin smoothing and more of like a neutral pigmentation. So definitely gonna test that to see. This looks quite good. This is a little focus test as I'm getting super close to the objects, what's happening. How are you? All right, we're heading to a place right now to test out the outdoor camera. So basically with the S23 Ultra, it now has 200 megapixels, which by default in really bright environments is gonna stay at 200 megapixels. But then Samsung says in mid lighting environments, it goes down to 16 megapixels. So it basically combines 16 pixels into like one larger pixel. And then when it's in really low light, it does four pixels into one larger pixel. So hypothetically, this should help with low light performance. I don't know. We're gonna test it first in a bright environment and then I'm also gonna test it in mid and low light to see what the actual performance difference is. I also think what's cool is like it's dynamic, the dynamic range, able to expose the phone, but then it's also able to expose the outside window light, which is pretty impressive. Another cool feature I just noticed, you can actually flip the camera um, while you're still recording. So I can go from front facing video to then just flip it and then I can immediately get back facing video in the same take. That's actually a huge feature because normally on other phones you'd have to pause the take and then have two separate clips. Whereas in this one, you can kind of stay in the moment and have the front clip and then the back clip. Oh my God, the bridge. This is actually beautiful. It's also funny how like not sketchy this area is in comparison, right? To where yeah, we just were like this. Is... Be on your toes, but not as much as there. Is there any spot in San Francisco where you don't need to be on your toes? Everywhere. Or is it everywhere? everywhere? Yeah. <laughs> 2 11 p.m. right now, phone's at 41%. Should I have checked this earlier so we had a starting point? Yes, obviously I should have, but we're starting now, 41%. It is an absolutely majestic, beautiful day out. And the screen brightness also looks really good. So one of the things that I personally do a lot with my phone is I look at my phone a lot for like navigation because I have zero sense of direction. And so having like an actual phone that has good screen brightness is important. Samsung screens are always amazing, honestly, but this year the screen brightness is a little bit improved. So it does look a little bit brighter outdoors. And the sensor gets larger, the minimum focus distance becomes um, larger as well. Meaning that when you get too close to something, in order to get most of it in focus, Samsung actually switches to the ultra wide lens instead of using the primary, but the ultra wide camera is like worse than the primary. So for years we've either had like focus fringing or an ultra wide thing. It's actually one of the reasons why a lot of people don't like the iPhone 14 Pro. And I noticed it again on this phone, but supposedly the ultra wide is slightly improved, but you guys have to let me know in the comments if you actually think it is. That's actually really good. I'm very impressed. Wow. 10X zoom looks really, really, really good. It's 20. And then this is like 3.2, 3x zoom. Genuinely blown away by the 10x zoom. Probably helped by the fact that it's 200 megapixels, so there's just inherently a lot of detail. Megapixels don't mean everything, um, obviously, as you know. Like, there can be a phone that has really high megapixels, like the red phone from a few years ago, but then terrible quality. I think the biggest thing that a lot of people use the ultra phones for is gaming. I'm not a gamer, so I cannot really give like an educated opinion on that. But I think even if you're not a gamer, having the extra performance means that the phone longevity wise will just last a little bit longer. And we're supposed to get four plus years of updates with the new phone, which is great. Supposedly there's a coffee shop that I've honestly seen in Emma Chamberlain's videos called Phil's Coffee. So we're gonna try it. That's so cool. That's actually my first time seeing it in San Francisco. 
Oh, thank you. Yeah, of course. Have a good one. You guys can go. Oh, thanks so much. Thank you. Then may I please have um, a cold brew with almond milk? Jacqueline? Taste test happening right now for sip. Wow, that's actually really good. It tastes like smooth. So I feel like I should have mentioned, I'm in San Francisco for the actual launch event, so it's a little bit of a change of scenery. This is my second time in San Francisco. Last time I was here was actually 2019, right before COVID happened. It was the last Samsung event that I went to. So it felt so good to be back. Like the energy in the room was infectious. 3.11 PM, the phone is at 32%. Regarding like people upgrading their phones every year, um, or if this is a big update over last year, most people that bought the S22 Ultra are not gonna get the S23 Ultra. I feel like this is for the person that really loved the Note line and now it's non-existent. So if they have like a Note 10 or a Note 9 or an S21 Ultra or an S20 Ultra, honestly, then this feels like a really, really good package. I'm noticing like little things like the build quality just feels a little bit nicer in my hand. It's also a beautiful day in San Francisco. Like that's definitely contributing to the good vibes. Battery life is a little concerning to me. They didn't improve it over last year in terms of million powers. And so because of that, we're already at 32%. And I feel like with a phone this big, it should be lasting a little bit longer. So we're gonna see at what time today it actually dies. I'm gonna to try to run it to 0%. So this is an example of a mid lighting environment where there's definitely some light, but this is like you're out to dinner with friends at a restaurant. I can push this into 200 megapixel mode if I want to. When I take the photo, it takes a little while to shoot. And then when it actually, when I go to see it, it takes a while to process versus the pixel bin image processes almost immediately. And you can actually see on the screen how much it changed in that processing and how sharp it is. Versus if I go here and do a regular photo. Now I take this, let's see what happens. So this is 200. Wow, that's actually a really big sharpness difference. Phone is at 28%, it's 3.22 p.m. So one of my least favorite things with filming these videos um, the day in life reviews, which I genuinely love filming, is filming in public. I find it so awkward until I hit record and then it's fun, like I feel like I'm in flow. But before I hit record, I'm like, oh, I do not want to film in public right now. Yeah. Are you taking the umbrella? Okay. Perfect example of the awkwardness of filming in public. They're literally cleaning up the space as we speak. Sun peeking through over the building is just giving me all of the casual magic I need in my life. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. It is 446. The phone is at 18% right now. I'm just leaving a briefing with the head of R&D. And when I'm in these meetings, first of all, so many of my like favorite tech YouTuber friends, and uh, sometimes it's just like, I think it's so surreal that I started this YouTube channel when I was 13 years old. And now I get to go to these events where I get to experience like the dream tech and talk to the people that are actually working on it and changing our lives with it. And it's literally all because of you guys. That's so good. A little stabilization action. The phone is officially like about to die. It's at 8%. I'm gonna plug it back in so we can do some night stuff. The night photography on this phone somewhat seems good, but then also like the shutter lag is real because they said that the shutter speed for a night photo is like less now in the briefing. But I noticed like depending on, I was doing some moving shots in the car and it was kind of slow that then it ended up blurring the lines. And I also tried the super steady in the car because um, I feel like that's a perfect time to test it. And what I noticed is that the image became darker, but very steady, impressively steady. Literally everyone is in a hurry to get to their flight. I probably should be too. So if you want to see another day in life review, you can click right here and I will catch you next week, next Friday. All right, have an awesome day. Bye.